Our special guest this week, then, is the chief executive of the Erskine Veterans Charity, the man right at the very top, the boss, Wing Commander Ian Cumming, MBE, is with us both today and on Thursday to give us an update on all the things that are happening at the Erskine Veterans Charity, both in the homes and uh, further afield as well. So my great pleasure to welcome to Erskine Veterans Radio, Ian Cumming. Thanks very much, Ian. Nice to speak to you. Let's just start with a, um, a little bit of a, a brief roundup of, of where the Erskine Veterans Charity is at at this moment. We, we spoke to, to Derek a little while ago about um, opening with care and, and obviously a big improvement in the way the world is from, from the last time that we spoke, which was um, back in, I think, April time. Um, restrictions mm. have eased. Families can now see their loved ones again and uh, positive changes overall for, for the, uh, the, the homes and, and the veterans and their families, of course. Oh, very definitely. You know, it's great to have the, um, the relatives coming in to see their, their, um, their loved ones uh, within the homes. Um, there's a real buzz around Erskine now, you know, much, much more um, smiling, much more activity. Uh, but that said, uh, that does actually make our staff uh, a lot busier. Clearly, you know, we've got to um, uh, test uh, visitors before they, they um, move to, through to see their loved ones. We've got to escort them there. And then after the visit, which everyone really, you know, really, really enjoys, We've also got to to you know clean the visiting area and and clean the the rooms and so forth. So there's a there's a big workload there, but because of the benefits it brings to to our veterans, you know everyone very willingly gets stuck into to do that. But we're not out of the woods yet. There's clearly there's an awful lot of infection uh, within the community, and our staff live within the community, so we really really need to keep on our toes in terms of. Uh, infection prevention control and, and all the good measures that you'd expect to see in place. We'll talk about some of the recruitment possibilities that uh, are available very soon. But as we move into this part of the year, a lot of talk in the news about vaccine boosters. Of course, um, many of our residents and staff were the first to receive the vaccines when they first became available at the start of the year. And those boosters now are uh, are just around the corner. Yep, absolutely. In fact, within the next week, I've already had notification that Erskine staff will be offered their um, their booster vaccination on the, uh, the 2nd of October, along with our, our residents. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it personally, uh, to make sure that my protection against uh, COVID is topped up. And obviously it's vital for our staff and, and the residents there because uh, th- those um, vaccinations and the boosters just make sure that you know, your chances of actually catching the virus are much reduced. And if you do catch it, then obviously the, the, the implications or, or the, the, the likelihood of a, of a serious reaction to the virus are, are lowered considerably as is your uh, likelihood of passing it on. So obviously, if you don't catch it because of the uh, the vaccination and the booster, then you, you can't pass it on. And um, you know it, it's win-win from my perspective. So I'm, I'm really actively encouraging uh, all staff and uh, all our residents to make sure that they, they take the booster. The vaccines, of course, are uh, making a huge difference to life everywhere. Um, and at this time of year, we know that bugs are a little bit more prevalent, but as well as the personal benefits of the vaccine, of course, it's a case of avoiding another lockdown and, and keeping all of the, the Erskine homes as open as possible for, for visitors and, and for activities as well. No, very definitely. I mean, we're, we're c- closely in, in touch with uh, Public Health Scotland uh, regarding um, you know, any member of staff who tests positive, uh, and you know the unlikely event of a of a resident testing positive, and and their calculations are all based on uh, the uptake of vaccinations within the homes and so forth. So, yeah, it, in the event of uh, people not taking up the vaccination or people not being vaccinated uh, across the community, there's more likelihood of an increased level of infection within the homes. That means lockdown, and of course, if we lock down, then our residents can't see their loved ones, and that has a massive impact upon their their um, their outlook and and quite literally their their health and well-being you know because that sort of interaction with uh, their loved ones and the interaction that they get with their activity staff so, you know a, a, a central part of um, what makes the, you know life at Erskine so enjoyable 
And an update on on recruiting as well, because um, we've, we've seen a few opportunities come available for for various um, parts of the of, of the Erskine Veterans Charity, both working with uh, with with residents and and behind the scenes too. So an update there on on opportunities that there are within within the charity at the moment. Yeah, certainly we are actively recruiting. There's roles in in most specialisations within the uh, the home in Edinburgh and within the uh, the homes on the west coast. So we're, we're looking for care staff, we're looking for registered nurses, and, and there's a variety of roles within head office too. You know, it's, it's a big team effort to do what we do at Erskine. And obviously the frontline care staff and registered nurses are absolutely fundamental to what we do. It's been a challenge through the pandemic across all of health and social care, but you know, the, the, the type of work that we do is you know, recognised as being exacting. It requires a, a, a good deal of, uh, you know, personal uh, skills and personal qualities. And and it's just so rewarding in terms of the, the, the benefits that you make to our residents' lives. You know, the the, um, the, the benefits certainly outweigh uh, the, the, uh, the, you know, the, the, the tough level of work that's actually involved. But, you know, we like to think of ourselves as good employers. We're increasingly adopting very um, flexible uh, terms and conditions. We pay very competitively uh, across the sector, and uh, we think that we're, we're a good organisation to work with. And certainly, many of the the um, staff were from around Erskine, whether that be in in the office or administrative, or, or those that are working with the, the the residents, the veterans, tend to more often than not have been there for a number of years. You know, you have a good uh, retention, and, and the people who who love working at Erskine really love it so much so that they they do spend sometimes decades working for the charity. That's right. We've we've got a, a great many staff who've been here uh, 10, 20, 30, even forty years. Recently, our executive chef retired, and he'd been with Erskine for 47 years. Wow. So he, he was clearly uh, a very loyal supporter and recognised the, the, the value of his work and, uh, and all the teamwork that, that we, um, we do. It, it's a great place to work, and really the, the difference that you see you're making to our residents and their families' lives on a daily basis is, is genuinely uplifting. The National Care Service consultation for Scotland is currently underway and uh, I think that closes at the start of November, doesn't it? What are your thoughts on that um, and maybe hopes of, of what it might show when the results are in? Well, I really welcome the, uh, the consultation on the National Care Service. I think that in principle it's a, it's a really good idea uh, to have uh, you know, a standardised, nationalised service. Um, that's not to say that... that Charities won't be involved in it, but then the main thrust of it is to have a government-led standardisation, uh, um, government-led commissioning service, so that all the the, um, the the social care that's delivered across Scotland, and of course that's not just nursing homes, care homes, that could be care at home, support to families, uh, promoting independence and so forth, is, um, is, is a really good thing. Um, I think it's important to realise that Social care and um, the the national health in Scotland are inextricably linked and mutually supportive. But in the past, I think it's fair to say that social care hasn't been well understood by the public, uh, the government and uh, the media for that matter. So this kind of consultation to show how they are mutually supportive and how resources going into social care are very well spent in protecting the NHS. It can only be a good thing. So I, I, I very warmly welcome it. And uh, I and Derek Barron, the Director of Care, will be quite considerably involved in a number of consultations at a number of levels. So, yeah, very good thing. Collaboratively, you're working with some other charities as well. Um, and we've spoken to some other organisations even as recently as this last week here on Erskine Veterans Radio, such as Playlist for Life, for example, um, who are coming up with the playlists for, for um, those with dementia in, in, in particularly. But um, you're not a standalone charity. The, the charities do work um, well with each other to, to um, further each other's work. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean within Scotland, the, the, the sector... And the veterans sector in particular is renowned for being a highly collaborative. You know, as evidence went through our work with uh, the Unforgotten Forces Consortium, which is, which is delivering outreach and support to, to older veterans living in the community. 
but also through our you know our membership of uh, Veterans Scotland, which is the umbrella organisation for all veterans charities in Scotland. It, it's uh, really good for bringing people together and uh, sharing their their outlooks, sharing news and so forth, and making sure that the work that we do is collaborative, doesn't duplicate each other's work, and that everyone really brings their expertise to the to the fore. I sit on the um, executive committee of Veterans Scotland, where all the big major charities, including uh, Combat Stress and Help for Heroes, are involved. So there's a great opportunity there to talk around the margins about opportunities to work more closely together, to understand each other's challenges and so forth. I also work on the policy working group within Veterans Scotland, and I chair the health and wellbeing group, which is growing into a very significant um, mover and shaker within the health and social care sphere across Scotland. And I also sit as the third sector representative on the Scottish Government's uh, Oversight and Implementation Group for Veterans and Armed Forces Health and Wellbeing. So Erskine is very much plugged in to, um, to you know, what's happening uh, within, uh, within Scotland, within the veterans sphere. And uh, yeah, there's a, a couple of really interesting collaborative opportunities that we're actively pursuing right now. Uh, which I'll, I'll be delighted to update you on in, in due course. You're a very busy man, but um, all for improving the lives of, of veterans right across Scotland. And at the moment, we've got our own big event happening, of course, the Sporting Senior Games, which is a great highlight, to, fantastic to have back after missing last year. And some great competition has been going on over the last week, 10 days or so. Many of our veterans have, have been involved in, in some way and looking at the photos and seeing the reports of, of how things are going it's fantastic to see yep you can you can take the veteran out of the military but you can't take the military out of the veteran <laughs> all our residents are are fiercely competitive you know they've enjoyed active lifestyles and we we try to actively support that you know it, it, and as they're when they're in the homes uh the, the senior sporting games is a really good example of that you know i've seen our our veterans uh uh, wheeling themselves down to the the, uh, the physiotherapy suite early in the morning to get some practice in uh, ahead of uh, other people arriving there. Yeah, they they really enjoy it, and and it's just to see the smiles on their faces as they you know they score a goal or or you know knock over the skittles or you know get get a, a, a new uh, a new record on the the uh, the javelin is is brilliant. It's really great. There's also quite a lot of events now on the calendar, things coming up that people can get involved in um, outside of the Erskine home. People can come along and support the charity in, in many different ways and people can get together and celebrate once again in the same room. Um, Ian, tell us about some of these events that we're looking forward to over the, the coming few weeks and months now. Well, um, first of all, on the 1st of October, we have the, um, the Victory Ball which is happening in a hotel in Glasgow, and that will be a very welcome return to, to community fundraising and, and engagement. Uh, very glitzy, very enjoyable, uh, where the great and the good will come along. Uh, there's a silent auction on, on the night, and, and really we, we'll uh, spend a lot of time talking about Erskine, what it does. There'll be uh, videos and presentations to, to update the, the, um, the attendees. Uh, we're also airing our Futures for the Brave uh, television advert, which I think will be very exciting. It's a, a lovely advert that, that really nicely articulates all the stuff we do. And of course, um, we're approaching the period of uh, remembrance. So uh, Erskine will be um, very much involved in uh, engaging with the public and, and reminding them that, um, you know, we have got veterans here who have served for a very long time. There's a few left who served uh, during the Second World War, did national service immediately after. And um, it's important for, for the public to realise that Erskine um, fundraises entirely separately from the poppy appeal. Of course, we, we support remembrance and we all individually put money into the tin in order to, to support the poppy appeal. But Erskine hasn't actually received any funding from the poppy appeal uh, since around 2007. We've got to raise over £10 million each year to deliver the, the type of and quality of care that we think our veteran residents deserve. And uh, therefore, it's very much a, an individual effort on our part to reach out to, uh, to the public, uh, help them appreciate what we do and hopefully garner support. So that, there's a big push for remembrance this year. 
And an important time of year, of course, for, for so many people. Um, if there are people listening to this who would like to donate to Erskine, um, how are they best to do that? Uh, what are the ways that they can, they can put some money in the virtual hat? Well, the, the easiest way to do it is to, to log on to our um, website, which is erskine.org.uk. And the, on the front page, there's a, there's a donate link there that they can uh, make a donation. There's also a telephone number that they can call on that website that, that um, lets them puts them through to the fundraising team and they can make a, a donation over the, um, uh, over the telephone. And we've even got an Alexa skill for those who have got smart speakers and you can make a, a, a donation through the Alexa app uh, simply by asking to make a, a donation to, to Erskine Veterans Charity. So yeah, there's a lot of opportunities. We will be out in the, um, in the community but on the whole, uh, the red tins that you see will, uh, and that we'll actually have within our um, uh, our various homes, are there for the poppy appeal. But yeah, plenty of ways for for the um, the public to to make a, a separate donation directly to Erskine, and uh, we'll put it to the very best use. And back to the subject of remembrance, uh, a hugely important and poignant time of year for for everyone, of course. How is Remembrance and armistice marked traditionally uh, across Erskine. Is there tradition to it? Yeah, there very definitely is. Obviously, during the pandemic, it curtailed things. But we have a, a service of remembrance at each of the homes. Uh, take the Erskine home in Bishopton in particular. Uh, we move out into the remembrance garden, which is in the centre of the, um, the, the Erskine home. Uh, we have the local minister who delivers a service. Uh, I make a, a short speech and recite uh, Bunyan's lines. And then um, we we typically have a pipe band or a piper there to play laments and appropriate music. The um, All the staff, all the residents are out uh, in the garden, um, very often under umbrellas, um, but um, they, they're wrapped up nice and warm. Um, social distancing will need to be taken into account this year, but it will be again a traditionally poignant uh, point within the, uh, the 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 annual calendar uh, for us to um, uh, give thanks and remember those who fell in service, uh, those who were injured and suffered either physical or, or mental life-changing injuries as a result, um, and to remember those who have lost in the year gone by. All very poignant and, and all very significant for Erskine as a charity, for its staff and, of course, for its veteran family. We talked before about the, the vaccine and how important that is in, first of all, keeping us safe, but also giving us different things in life now than what we had a year ago. The fact that we can get together, we can see friends and these events can happen. And and hopefully that's going to continue to be the case going through the, the, the coming months and, and towards Christmas. And as a result, it means that there's lots more that Erskine can do in terms of moving forward with, with the plans for the charity and, and spreading the word further and, and, and being able to, to serve more people as well. Oh, yeah, it's, it's going to make a, a huge difference. You know, a, a little bit more time to, uh, to plan ahead, to, to look into those collaborations that I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, we're now expecting our transitional support accommodation at David Boyle Court, those 24 apartments that we've got to support younger service leavers whose plans on transitioning from the military have come unstuck through, you know, bad luck or bad timing. We expect those are going to fill up quite quickly. Um, and and uh, you know we're actively spreading the word about the support that we can deliver to younger veterans. Uh, Ermac, the Erskine Reed McEwen Activity Centre, has fully opened again. It's great to see a smile on the faces of the uh, the members down there. And we are, as I think I mentioned when we last spoke in April, actively looking at other locations for other veterans activity centres. The next one we think is likely to be up in the north in the Forest area. Um, and, and again, you know, we should be able to reach out and support a significant veteran community up in the, in the, the Murrayshire area uh, to help them enjoy all the activities, support and camaraderie that, that the, um, the veterans at Ermac enjoy. So, yep, lots of positivity for the future. And a word about the, the term veteran, and you touched on it just there about how there will be accommodation for, for some of the, the younger veterans. And, you know, you could be a, a young veteran and still in your teens. And 
perhaps you leave at short notice the armed forces, find yourself on hard times and and Erskine looking to support veterans of, of all ages and that's you know a very important point to make, isn't it? You know, abs- you're absolutely right. I mean, um, a veteran conjures up all, all sorts of images of uh, uh, gentlemen in, in blazers with, with uh, medals and so forth. But yep, we've got our youngest member at Ermac, I think he's 27 years old, but our definition of a veteran is anyone who served one day within the armed forces. And, and, and because of that definition, um, there are significant numbers of younger people who have only served a short time within the forces, uh, but may have encountered a, a, an operational injury, a training injury, um, or you know, si- simply had to leave for a, a variety of reasons. You know, it doesn't suit them. But I think it's important to recognise that um, veterans are a, a diverse cross section of, of um, British and Scottish society. They come from all walks of life. Uh, some some from um, you know, very privileged backgrounds, but some from considerably underprivileged backgrounds. And um, I, th- I think it's, it's wonderful that they've chosen to join the military. That shows a, a, a sense of public spirit. It shows um, that they've got um, qualities of, sort of dedication and, and discipline and so forth that, that um, a future employer could really, um, could really use and tap into. So, yeah, we're, we're uh, reaching out to, to help those younger service leavers who may not have received or built up the, the, the leadership and management uh, expertise that the likes of, of me uh, and, and sergeants, warrant officers and so forth may, may have garnered over the years. But the fact that they joined the forces, uh, the fact that they, they learned teamwork and, and uh, public service, you know, and that, that's sort of drilled into them or in, intrinsically in them, that's something that we, we aim to showcase and show employers that, that you know, these uh, members of the, the, the ex-armed services community have got a lot to offer them and uh, you know, give them the opportunity to, to, uh, to show their worth. So that's a, that's a big part of what our transitional support accommodation is all about. And there are perhaps people that have been in the, the armed forces for a relatively short amount of time and, and maybe don't even consider themselves as a veteran and don't perhaps realise that they have this support now available to them as, as a result. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. Yeah, the, the, the fact that the word veteran conjures up uh, older people in blazers with medals at, at Remembrance Day um, can uh, confuse former members of the armed services themselves who are veterans but don't recognise that. So yeah, there really is a, a lot of support out there. And uh, the Veteran Scotland website um, is a is a really good place to go for veterans in Scotland. Then anyone who encounters some kind of uh, trials or tribulations after service can go there, and um, it's just just a question of you know making a phone call, sending an email, getting in touch with Veterans Scotland, and they will uh, signpost the the uh, the person who gets in touch, whatever age, whatever their circumstances are, to the, the most appropriate charity within uh, the Veterans Network in Scotland to uh, to help support them. And, and there'll be many charities ready to help in, in a variety of different ways. So you know, very holistic, very collaborative and, and very, very effective. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for updating us, uh, Ian, on everything that's happening at the Erskine Veterans Charity. And uh, hopefully um, we're in for a, a much better time over the coming months. And um, here's to 2022. An absolute pleasure.